In this problem, we want to calculate shear force on a solid body. And what we're looking at is the simplest possible case for this, uh, the case where we have a flat plate. And this flat plate is moving above the ground at some very low velocity, at a very low distance away from the ground. And the case is represented below. We have a flat plate with relatively normal dimensions moving at one millimeter above the ground at some very low velocity. And we want to calculate the shear force on this. So let's take a look at this situation seen from the side. What we have is on top, we have the flat plate. So I'm going to represent it like this. Whoop, sorry, uh, flat plate like this. Um, and below here we have the ground. And this is very exaggerated. The flat plate is very long compared to the height here, uh, but we need the space to represent velocity distributions in between relatively clearly. So in between those two plates, um, those two surfaces, we have capital H, one millimeter of height. The plate is moving at a velocity which is called U plate here, which I simply, I'm going to call uh, capital U like this. What is happening to the fluid? The fluid in between those two bodies is stuck. It is stuck to the ground on the bottom and it is stuck to the plate on top. The plate is moving with capital U. So I know that the fluid, because of the no slip condition, we have velocity capital U on top and it will have zero velocity on the bottom. What is the velocity distribution in between those two points? That is all along those points in between here. We don't know. This is the truth. We simply do not know what the velocity distribution. It could be anything. However, in a very simple case where the plate is moving at a very low height above the ground and at relatively low velocity, we can guesstimate this velocity distribution. We know that the Reynolds number is very low and um, the flow is going to be laminar and relatively smooth. And so the simplest possible flow distribution we can imagine is a velocity distribution that looks like this, that is simply linear distribution. And so the velocity, we say, increases progressively with altitude, um, proportionally to height. I'm going to put my two coordinates of interest here, which are the coordinate Z um, in this direction and the coordinate Y on top here. Okay, so how do we process uh, this problem now? What we want to do is to calculate shear force on the plate. To have shear force on the plate, we need to have shear. Shear will be expressed first everywhere inside the fluid and then specifically on the plate. To have shear, we need velocity. And so we need to express velocity in between the two bodies um, uh, in general terms, as general as possible. So let's do this. Uh, the velocity in the Z direction, uh, we'll call it W like this. And I'm going to say W is simply a function of Y. It's a function of positive altitude like this. W starts at zero. This is the initial value of W. And then as I climb into Y, then W is going to increase. It's going to increase by a factor that's proportional to Y. What is this factor? I don't know yet. I'm going to call it K like this. To find out what K is and to have a complete distribution for W, I'm going to be very rigorous. Um, and I'm going to apply boundary conditions. I'm going to say there are two boundary conditions that I know that allow me to find what K is. Um, the first boundary condition, like this, is that when, um, when y here is equal to zero, it's on the ground, uh, then my velocity is zero. So I know that w here is equal to zero when y is equal um, to zero. Okay. And the second boundary condition that I have is that I know that when the, velocity, the position is equal to capital H, so the position is on the plate, then my velocity over there is equal to the velocity of the plate, which is capital U over here. So I'm going to say that W here is equal to capital U at Y is equal to capital H. And this, in particular, the second boundary condition allows me to quantify K. Now let's see what it looks like. I take boundary condition two and I say capital U is the value of W is equal to zero plus K multiplied by the value of Y, um, which is now capital H like this. 
Now this allows him to find k. And it's not very difficult to see that if u is equal to kh, then k is equal to capital U divided by h, like this. And this now I can plug in back into my original speculation or guesstimate velocity distribution. And I have a w here is equal to capital U over h multiplied by y here. Okay, so let's square this up. And let me insist that this is a guesstimate. We do not prove this. We have an intuition for how it is. Um, if the plate was not perfectly horizontal, it was tilted a little bit, or not perfectly flat, it was a bit wavy, um, or if the velocity was high, then we would not be able to guesstimate the velocity distribution. We would have to solve for it. And the process for this we'll see in another chapter. Um, but let me already ruin the suspense by saying um, that in anything but the simplest cases, uh, we do not have an analytical way of writing this uh, by hand. We have to compute this uh, with computers. Okay, so we have the velocity distribution. Let's take a look now at the shear. We want the shear everywhere in between those two points. The shear uh, is going to be the derivative of velocity with respect to space. Um, shear, tau, is going to be the velocity uh, multiplied by the partial derivative of the velocity with respect to distance. Now comes the difficult question of expressing shear, the two indices of shear correctly, and finding according to which distance I'm going to differentiate shear. Well, let's go back a little bit to the, to the drawing. We want to calculate shear on a plane, whoop, on a plane that is perpendicular to the horizontal. So um, we want, sorry, we want to calculate shear on a plane that's parallel to the horizontal, on a, on a plane that is completely horizontal. And this plane is perpendicular to the y direction. So the first index of shear, right at the bottom of the screen here, the first index of shear will be in the direction perpendicular to y. And in which direction is the, sh is the shear pointing? In which direction? Uh, this direction will be in the direction z. So we're going to write it as so. Tau is going to be the shear on a plane that's perpendicular to y pointing in the z direction. And so this gives us now the velocity, uh, sorry, the coordinate by which we want to differentiate the velocity. And uh, this is coordinate is y. So we want to take the velocity in the z direction and differentiate it with respect to the y direction. Okay, this is not very difficult mathematically to do. We can actually carry out on a, on a single line. This is the viscosity of the fluid uh, multiplied by the, differenti the partial differential of w with respect to y, and you can see this is going to be the partial differential with respect to y of simply capital U over h y. This is the value here of w, and it's not very difficult to carry out. We have mu u over capital H here, like this. And so I can express now the shear, the shear everywhere in between the two bodies, tau yz, like this, as being simply mu u over capital H. This means that anywhere I go in between those two plates above, where I go here, anywhere I go here in between those two plates, the shear, which I could represent perhaps with a, a pair of little arrows like this, uh, it could be like this. This could be the shear, like the rubbing effort, if you want, in between those two bodies is everywhere the same. So it happens that the shear on the plate will also have the single value of mu capital U over H. So now that we have solved the fluid mechanics part of this, we can go back to the engineering. And the engineering says, well, the, the force uh, due to shear on the plate is simply the integral over the whole surface um, of the shear multiplied by every time a little, bit, a little piece of area. And in this case, we're going to have the integral. Um, let's put it, let's write it perhaps separately. We're going to integrate over the two coordinates um, of interest here, which are shown below in the, in the picture, just below me here. We're going to say, is the integral uh, from 0 to x max 
um, in the x direction and then the integral from zero uh, to z max in the z direction um, of every time the shear the shear y z like this um, ds and ds i'm going to split into dx and dz like this so a little square piece of square um, um, infinitely small square on the plate that is moving over here and this is a very complicated way uh, of expressing because it's of expressing the problem because it's very general but the math to do this is extremely simple and this is because tau here is simply one number mu is the viscosity of the fluid this is the velocity of the plate and this is the height in between none of this depends on either x or z so that this number gets out and i'm left with here with just x max z max and then here um tau tau y z like this x max and z max i could just call them the dimensions of the plate usually we like to have l1 l2 that's easier to write and this i replace by the value above this is mu capital u over h over here and this is the force due to the shear on the plate now let's put numbers into this uh, to see what 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 kind of result we get um, i think we had for uh, this example we had 200 millimeters here um, 400 millimeters there uh, viscosity of 1 times 10 to the power of minus 5 um, pascal seconds a low velocity of 0 0.5 meters per second and a very very low height of um, 1 millimeter so let's put in the numbers l1 is 0 0.2 meters l2 is 0 0.4 meters the viscosity is 1 times 10 to the power 5 and i multiply this by the velocity which is 0 0.5 divided by the height which is 1 times 10 to the power minus 3 uh, meters and so if you put this into your calculator you should get 4 times 10 to the power minus 4 and what is the unit of force it is newtons um, and as engineers we like to express always newtons millinewtons kilonewtons and so on and so forth so we can re-express this as 0 0.4 millinewton of force this is not a lot of force and this is the final result for this problem Again, I insist that this is a very basic, simple situation where we're able to guess the velocity distribution in between the two bodies here. Without this guess, there's no way we can progress through this problem. Um, but how to calculate the velocity distribution as a result of shear pressure and gravity is a whole other story that we'll see later.